I got to tell you, I'm, I'm genuinely excited for this next guest. And again, I'm not just saying that because he's on hold listening to me introduce him. I do not believe he has been on this program. And I am eager to chat with him because I love the way that he goes about his business and does his work. And he's one of the most successful um, uh, head coaches in the NFL, certainly coming out of the gate in Green Bay with 13 win seasons every single time. Uh, he is on the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone line, the head coach of the Green Bay Packers, Matt LaFleur. How you doing, coach? I'm doing well, Rich. Thanks for having me on. You got Finally. it. Thank you. Well, <laughs> listen, I've, I've been knocking on the door. I've been knocking on the door. I just appreciated you answer this time. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, no, it's great to be on with you. Thank you. Greatly appreciate that. So uh, when you get the schedule tomorrow night, the first thing you look at will be what, coach? Well, there's there's a lot of things you look at, but uh, I may or may not have gotten a sneak peek oh. at the schedule, but um, oh. not to not to tease anybody, but uh, oh. no, you're always kind of looking where where you open up at, and whether it's home or on the road, and then just kind of any um, pitfalls, potential pitfalls, like in terms of that are out of the ordinary in the number of days to prepare for a game. So if we have six days in between a game or five days, obviously the Thursday night game, that's kind of what we look for. So read me your schedule then. Uh, what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think our PR guy would kill me. <laughs> yeah, that, the, you, <laughs> if you have a red light on your office phone, it might light. It might light up. I don't know. It could be, could be one of those things. But uh, what, what is your general sense, though, on when you like buys? I know that... that that is something that does is usually situationally dependent. Like if you, heaven forbid, have a significant amount of injuries, you want it right when you need it. But what's your general sense on that subject matter, Coach? Well, if if everything's going well, then I think you'd prefer it later in the season. But, um, you know, we've had the early buy before and we've had the late buy. And so I think you just got to be ready to adjust and adapt to whatever whatever is given to you, just like you have to do on a weekly basis. I mean, um we just show up and play. Basically, shut your mind off, show up and play. Matt LaFleur, Green Bay Packers head coach here on the Rich Eisen Show. How 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 are you a different coach now than when you were just a few years ago, Matt? Oh, I think in a lot of ways. I think just a, a much more comfortable, um, you know, being out in front. I don't think that's necessarily my nature um, to, to want that. But, um, no, I just – knowing what you believe in and – also, knowing the fact that we have so many great people around around myself in this organization, you know, not only in the front office, but other coaches, and then we've just the character of our football team is, is really outstanding, and that makes it much more fun to come to work each and every day. And it just seems to me now, entering this fourth year, you tell me if I'm off. You feel free to do that. I hear that all the time anyway. But you tell me if I'm <laughs> off here. So year one, your first time head coach coming in, replacing Mike McCarthy, and there's Aaron Rodgers who's set in his ways, and we're all wondering if he can adapt to you and vice versa, right? And then you guys make the NFC Championship game, but then decide to draft Jordan Love, and me and the rest of the uh, media world is asking, why would you antagonize your best player like that? And then that was year two with all of that and all the conversation in year three, we all know going into it, we didn't know if Aaron was coming back. And now this seems to be just like quiet and normal for the first time for you in Green Bay. Is that a fair assessment right now for you? Yeah, I would say uh, this last off season has been the least amount of gray I've grown probably since I've been here. So um, the, the, the first two were definitely uh, – there was there was a lot of talk, and you know we we do our best to kind of block out the outside world, anyways. But I think anytime you're in a situation where you don't know if your quarterback's coming back, that that's a pretty big deal. Obviously, every year in this league is met with different challenges and different circumstances, and I mean we got to adjust again this year because we lost a lot of great players that have helped produce a lot of wins here for the organization. I mean you're talking about guys like Devontae Adams and. Darius Smith and and as well as a few others, uh, MVS. So um, you know we we got to acclimate the new guys. We're really excited about our team, but bottom line is everybody's excited this time of the year. You got to go in and you got to put the work in. You got to come together as a team and get better each and every day. Well, I mean, we were all surprised that Rogers signs back and then Devonte Adams goes, 
And I'm wondering, what about you? Were you surprised about that sequence, Coach? Yeah, I'd say so. I, I, I'm not going to... I'm not going to blow smoke up your butt. I definitely was a little bit surprised how that whole thing transpired. I was optimistic that we could uh, work something out, but at the end of the day, it, it didn't work out that way. And so you just, you got to adjust and you got to move on. So uh, was there any point in time? Cause again, uh, every head coach that's highly successful like you is a control freak. I mean, did you try and, and make calls control it best you can to avoid that result oh. coach? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You're always in uh, communication with, you know, your your best players and, and not only your best players, but guys that you truly respect how they go about their work. And, and you know, Devontae's no different. Obviously, he's uh, the best receiver in the game right now, in my opinion. And then I think he's a great person as well. And I love how he approaches the game and how he works. And he's a guy that I got a lot of respect for. So certainly we, we tried to do our best to you know, kind of remedy the situation and it just didn't, didn't go that way. How has your relationship with Rodgers evolved from the start and now to where it is today? How can you walk me through that, if you don't mind? Yeah, I, I think it's just like anything. You know, we I think we know each other. I think there's a lot of trust and, and love and respect for one another. Not to say that we, we don't have our differences, just like any anybody else. Uh, that certainly happens at, from time to time, but I think just the level that we communicate, we're always able to, you know, uh, be on the same page. And, and like I said, there, there's such a mutual respect for one another. What would the uh, a difference be? Like, what, and, and obviously it's resolvable, <laughs> clearly, but just walk me through what, what, a, what a loggerhead moment with, uh, with Rogers would look like or sound like. Well, it, it could be anything, right? It could be just in terms of how, you know, you're implementing a game plan or, um, you know, there there might be a certain play that that I really want to run, but if if he doesn't feel comfortable with it, why would I put him in that position? Mm-hmm. So he generally wins the arguments. <laughs> 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 yes, indeed, I I I, I hear you. Um, but I guess you know it seems like you're you're more attuned to each other than ever before. It, that's what it looks like when you're watching a game with you guys together yeah absolutely i like i said i think just you know a lot of it is just in the the preparation that we put in uh, on a weekly basis and you know being in all the meetings with him so we have great dialogue great communication and you know you get a good sense for for what he likes and then you know in game just uh, that communication and and being able to adjust if we need to if we need to adjust Matt LaFleur here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. So let me just uh, give you the um, the general, I guess, uh, wisdom. I don't know if it's uh, conventional or otherwise, or the conversation based on Green Bay's um, end game this past year, um, and 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 bounce it off you. The general sense is is the offense that you are running with Rodgers at the helm is not equipped to win games when it's snowing and it's 10 degrees outside and that you would be better off playing in a warmer climate that clearly will never happen by having home field advantage. How do you respond to something that's put forth like that, Matt LaFleur? Well, I think everybody is probably a little emotional about the last game, you know, uh, and it still hurts. It still stings. But um, I think one thing you always got to do is is recognize your past and, and try to learn from each and every situation. And, you know, you got to give the team, the San Francisco 49ers, uh, a lot of credit. That We knew that was going to be a tough game regardless. I mean, they're such a great defense and a very physical football team. Um, I don't think uh, myself, more so than anybody, uh, did their job to the standard that we'd like, like to do it at. And any time you go – don't perform to your expectation I think that leaves rooms for for, for people to criticize and I guess that's going to be the narrative and we're going to have to do something about it and prove people wrong do you think the criticism is anywhere remotely close to the neighborhood of valid though coach uh, I, I do not, but it is what it is. I mean, that that's just everybody's entitled to their own opinion and um, you know, it's up to us to, to do something about it and prove people wrong and until we do that that will be the narrative 
Please tell me that when Debo made it known he wanted to be traded, you called Kyle Shanahan and asked if you could have him. Please did tell me you did that, Matt LaFleur. <laughs> did I you? did not call Kyle Shanahan. <laughs> oh, man, I thought that was an opportunity. I did not. You did. No. No. Okay, so we I've can't... I've been on the other end of that call before. Yeah, I've heard that story. <laughs> So you didn't take so, you didn't take that opportunity that that opportunity no, is not there. I'm not going to say any uh, that Goody didn't call. Um, okay, but certainly uh, I I did not make that call. Okay, okay, just had to ask you that question. So uh, <laughs> when you're in a draft room and you're late in the uh, first round and you know the free uh, football world is waiting to see you draft a, a a wide receiver and then you take uh, two defensive players and that's absolutely not giving the full scope of the defensive players you took and the program from which you took them and the championship quality with which they play. But um, what happened on draft night that night for you guys? Well, I I think you saw it. I mean, a lot of those wide receivers went earlier and and there was a big run. And I I don't think you can just – obviously, we we knew we had a need for wide receiver. Um, But you can't force the issue. And I thought Goody did a great job of – you know, just being patient, knowing that there were some other guys out there that we were very intrigued with and, you know, ultimately took the best player, in our, in, at least from our board, um, and we feel like we got better with those two guys. So I was I was super excited about it. I think as long as you're adding really good football players, and not only great, great football players, but good people uh, to your organization, I, th- I think there's a lot of reason to be excited about that. Yeah, I mean, you, you've you got, um, you know, uh, Quay Walker, who is terrific. I, I, I love Wyatt a lot. And obviously, you know, with Kenny Clark there, and you can move Clark around. As you know, I'm a big Michigan guy. So you mm-hmm. have in Rashawn Gary, uh, I love watching him play and blossom as well. You could do a ton mm-hmm. of stuff with the defensive players you got, but walk me through the wide receivers, if you don't mind, and what you think they can do. You took two kids in the first few rounds. Um, What do you think they can do and how quickly you think they can make an impact for you this fall? Well, shoot, we hope, we hope they can impact very quickly, but uh, you know, Christian Watson, obviously he's, he's big, he's fast, he's physical. Um, Got a chance to see him this past weekend uh, with our rookie camp. So we had them in, I I should say, last weekend. And, um, you know, he's a really impressive guy, not only just in terms of his physical ability, but just how he goes about his business, how he was able to pick up our playbook pretty quickly. Um, I want to be careful about, you know, giving all these expectations about what he's going to go out there and do because ultimately, you know, he's – He's he's really young and he's got a lot to learn and he's got to go through a through an off season and um, with us and then we'll have a better idea. But I think just when you look at his his skill set, it is pretty impressive. Um, just what he's able to do is just a very big explosive athlete. And then when you talk about Romeo Dobbs, again another guy that is you know he's six two two oh five. He's a well built guy. He, he's got really good speed he showed extremely aggressive hands um not only through the draft process but this past weekend so those are two guys that that we're we're pretty excited about and just adding to our rotation and then the last guy we drafted in the seventh round samari tori he's another guy that just is is a pretty physically gifted that um a versatile receiver that we could put inside in the slot or or put him outside he's got some really good um, athletic body movements uh, that resemble kind of like a basketball player. And that's that's something we always kind of look for in, in, in a wide out and in their ability to separate. So those are three young guys that, that we're really excited to add to the mix of, of some of the vets that we have. Did Rodgers give his two cents on the wide receiver position going into the draft to you guys? Yeah, you know, we talked to him about it. Um, and I think ultimately, I think there's there's certainly a lot of trust on his part, and in, in that we are going to go try to get the best players available. And um, you know, we feel like we did that for given the circumstances. Okay. And then last one for you here, uh, with all the quarterback movement that we saw in March, and the you know Rogers staying put, a lot of us assumed Jordan Love would be on the move. Somebody would call for for you, and like Rogers is at least going to be there. We assume for the next couple of years. 
and which take you to uh, past uh, Love's contract. Uh, any thoughts of that at all? You know, th- th- those are decisions that I don't make. <laughs> and I'm glad I don't have to make them, Rich. So uh, that's uh, those are great questions for Goody, though. You got to get him on the show okay. with me. All right, let's do that. Uh, I'd, I'd be happy to. I'd be happy to do that. That's a, that's I would a, love to hear his answer. That's, a, <laughs> that's another guy whose door I've been knocking on. So we got to we got to hopefully he answers that. Coach, I appreciate the time. Thank you so very much. Let's uh, let's do this more often. Uh, if if you are up for it, so would I. Thank you for the call. Appreciate yeah, it. Absolutely, I appreciate it. I, I just want to get out there because you're out in L.A., correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, there's a chair yeah. right here if you'd I mean, like to shoot. do it. Okay, when are you coming? You got to do it in the winter time, though. Well, I mean, that would be a problem for you, though. <laughs> you want to be where you, you want to. Well, uh, you know what I mean. Winter lasts till like <sighs> April. Here, okay. So. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome here anytime, man. Uh, come on out here. We'll have a good time. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Rich. You Appreciate got, it. Thank you. Right back at you. That is Matt LaFleur, the head coach of the Green Bay Packers, right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.